to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim the news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. John chapter 8, verse number 32. We welcome you today to our study of Answering Denominational Doctrine. As always, we want to encourage you to have your Bible handy. If you don't have that out, please locate your Bible and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God today in addressing some of the doctrines of men and see if they're really found in the Word of God. And today specifically, we're going to look at the idea of the rapture and some of the premillennial doctrines you may have heard of. As always, we're so glad that you joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area. These lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Church of Christ. Well, why don't you stop by the Church of Christ in your area, get to know them, study the Word of God with them. They'd love for you to visit any of their assemblies on Sunday or Wednesday, and they'd be happy to study the Word of God with you. At the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about men and women's souls as well. We want you to go to heaven and, friend, to have a good knowledge of the Word of God. And we want to encourage you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. There is a host, a wide variety of good Bible study material available, free of charge. DVDs, CDs, we've got written material, just a host of videos that you could watch that would be helpful in your study as well. Or for your smartphone, you can download the Gospel of Christ app for both Android and Apple, free of charge, and that's a great way to study the Word of God on the go as well. Today we're thinking about a very popular doctrine called the rapture, the premillennial idea of people being caught up, Jesus coming back and having another kingdom, a thousand year reign, and all those ideas. Maybe you've seen this bumper sticker. Have you ever been riding in the car and a bumper sticker kind of catches your eye. I saw one a while back and it said this, in case of the rapture, this car will be unmanned. Well, what's that all about? If the rapture occurs, the people who are in it are saying, we're going to be caught up and there's going to be an empty car. Well, friend, is, is that the idea? Is Jesus just going to suck people out of their cars and out of their shoes and people's clothes be left behind and, and people just be caught up with the Lord? You know, it's as though so many people buy into this idea that Christ is coming back and He's going to bring people up and then there's going to be a new kingdom and, and all these things. Well, friend, let's talk about the rapture for just a moment. What is the, the teaching of the rapture? What is the idea of the rapture? Friend, the, the teaching of the rapture that is promoted by Hal Lindsey and a host of other premillennial teachers, the teaching of the rapture as well as the Word is not even found in Scripture one time. In fact, Hal Lindsey admits this. In his book, The Late Great Planet Earth, on page 137, Hal Lindsey says this about the rapture. Sometimes, he says, misunderstood terms provide the red flag an unbeliever needs to turn him from the simple truth of God's Word. He says this, rapture may be one of those words. It's not found in the Bible, so there's no need for you to race to your concordance if you have one. Well, friend, it's, it's not just the fact that the Word's not found in the Bible. What about the doctrine and teaching of the rapture as well? Friend, throughout Scripture, God refers to unscriptural doctrines and teachings in several ways. For example, the New Testament says in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 that Christians are to beware of doctrines of demons. These doctrines do not emanate from the throne of heaven. They emanate from the depths and the horrors of hell. They are called the, the damnable traditions 
of men by Jesus in Matthew 15, verses 7 through 9. It is beyond or more than the teaching of Christ. In 3 John, verse 9, it's referred to as strange doctrines, Hebrews 13, 9, and doctrines of men, Colossians 2, verse 22. And so as we think about this doctrine and this word, it would be classified since it's not found in the Bible. And we're going to show that from the Scripture, the word nor the idea being found in Scripture, it fits in a different class of doctrines as we have just mentioned. Now, let's talk a little bit then about what the rapture is. Maybe you've heard about the rapture, but you really have never thought in depth about what that means. Well, here's how the rapture is defined. Oral Roberts had this to say about the rapture. His appearance, Jesus' appearance in the clouds will be veiled to the human eye and no one will see him. He will slip in, slip out, move in to get his jewels and slip out as under the cover of night. And so it's this kind of Jesus coming, slipping in, slipping out, getting everybody he wants and then leaving and nobody knowing it. Seven years supposedly before the second coming, there is going to be a secret return of Christ for His saints, followed by seven years of tribulation, then a thousand-year reign of Christ in Jerusalem. In fact, Hal Lindsey said this about the rapture. He called it the ultimate trip. He said, those who are alive to tell the story of project disappearance will try in vain to describe the happening which will verify the oldest secret of God's Word. There I was, drive, now you imagine this, this is what Hal Lindsey says. There I was, driving down the freeway, and all of a sudden the place went crazy. Cars going in all directions, and not one of them had a driver. I mean, it was wild. I think we've got an invasion from outer space, Lindsey says. Well, one thing's for certain. It's definitely an alien doctrine in that it is strange and foreign to the Bible, but we're just trying to help you see what this doctrine says. Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins in their book Left Behind, which is a powerful fiction proponent of this doctrine, they kind of begin their book this way. It begins with a, imagine this, a 747 jet flying over the Atlantic Ocean. A hundred people on board are caught up in the rapture. And in their book, they leave clothes, jewelry, and pacemakers behind in their seats. My well, friend, is that really taught in the Bible? Is this a biblical idea? There's a lot of fantasy involved in it, but is it biblical? The word rapture, of course we mentioned that English word is not found in the Bible. The word comes from a 4th century Latin Vulgate word, rapier or raptum, translation of the Greek word found in 1 Thessalonians 4, harpazo, which means to be, that we're caught up together with him in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 through 17. And so if the theory is based mainly off of this word, and in many ways it is, Here's what that theory also means. Friend, the rapture happened. If it's just, and we're not saying it is, but if it's just based off the idea of one's being caught up, and friend, the rapture's already occurred. Here's what I mean by that. Enoch and Elijah, they received the rapture long before the church age. Genesis 5, verse 24, 2 Kings 2, 11, we are told that both Enoch and Elijah were caught up to the Lord and they never saw death. If this is true, just based on the idea of being caught up, Jesus took part in the rapture. Luke 24, 51, Acts 1, verse 9, He was caught up, as it were, in the air. Paul took part in the rapture in the church age. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, Paul was caught up into that third heaven. And Philip took part in the rapture as well uh, during the church age also. Uh, he was called up, as it were, to God in the Spirit. And so you can't build a doctrine just around one single word, harpazo, the idea of being caught up. But as you think about the rapture idea, the rapture fantasy, please understand this doctrine can be easily refuted from Scripture. Let me give you some illustrations and some doctrinal teachings that show that. Number one, when you think about the rapture fantasy, they say, the proponents of this will say, the second coming of Christ is going to be different from the rapture. It's going to be different 
and after the rapture. So you've got the rapture, then after that, and different from that, you're going to have the second coming. How Lindsay says in his book, The Late Great Planet Earth, on page 131, we believe the Bible distinguishes between the rapture and the second coming of Christ, and they do not occur simultaneously. And so at the second coming of Christ, people are not then going to be caught up and raptured up to be with the Lord. Well, friend, again, that's not what the Bible teaches. I want you to look in your Bible in Acts chapter 24, and notice what the Scripture says about this idea in Acts chapter 24, verse 15. Are these two different ideas, or are they simultaneous events? The Bible says in verse 15, Paul speaking, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. And so when we think about this idea, Paul says there's going to be a resurrection. It's not as though there are going to be two different events. You've got the rapture where one group of God saved is caught up. Then you've got the second coming where everybody else is going to be uh, resurrected. No, Paul says there's not two re resurrections. Listen to this now. There is a resurrection, one resurrection, both of the just and the unjust. We're not talking about two unique different events. We're not talking about an event where Christ comes back and all the saved are caught up and then a different event at the second coming where everybody else is resurrected. No. Paul says there is a, there's one resurrection, both of the just and the unjust. Not two events, but they occur simultaneously according to the Word of God. Now, what about another doctrine that's promoted in the rapture? That the rapture, and this is probably one that we can see the clearest is not true. The rapture is going to be secret, they say. You won't know it. Others won't know it. Only the elect will know it actually happened. It's this big, it's the greatest secret in God's Word, they'll say. Hal Lindsey says this. In the rapture, only the Christians see Him. It's a mystery, a secret. When the living believers are taken out, the world is going to be mystified. And so is this some big secret that only Christians are going to see? No, definitely not. In fact, the Bible clearly teaches this is blatant, false teaching and error. Let me show you from the Word of God. Would you open with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. We're not talking about some big secret. The Bible has revealed who will see Christ at the harpazo, at the, uh, those being caught up. When people are caught up, which is where this idea comes from, who's going to see that? Just Christians? Look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and notice verse number 16. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain shall be caught up together with them, in the, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Paul says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Friend, if this is a secret event, it is the loudest secret event to ever occur. You ever thought about that? If this is a secret, why are you blowing the trumpet? Why is there a shout? With the shout of an archangel, the trumpet will be blown. You can just see the magnificence of that event. Friend, you don't hide. What is God going to do? Stick His finger in everybody else's ears? No. This is not a secret event. Again, as one writer said, if this is a secret, it's allowed a secret to ever occur. The shout, the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God. Uh, notice Revelation chapter 1. I want you to see what Revelation says about this as well. It's often a book that many proponents of the rapture promote. What does Revelation say? Look in Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold, He is coming with the clouds, Every eye will see Him, even they who pierced Him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of Him, even so. Amen. How many people are going to see Him? Every eye will see Him. All tribes of the earth, and, and many of those would later become children of God, Christians. Paul writing to Christians tells them that. And so we've got a great sound, and you've got all tribes of the earth. All are going to see His coming. And so this is not, as is promoted, some secret event. A third false doctrine related to the rapture deals with the raising of the righteous. They say, only the righteous 
will be raised at the time of the rapture. The wicked then will be raised at the end of the millennium. And so you've got two raisings again. You've got the righteous being raised, and then at the end of that thousand year reign, supposedly the wicked are going to be raised then. Well, friend, is that true? Does the Bible teach there are two separate resurrections? One of the righteous and one of the wicked? No, my friend, the Bible does not teach that. In fact, in very clear terms, God says there's one. John chapter 5, I want you to look at the Word of God. John chapter 5, would you look with me in verses 28 and 29. Notice what the Gospel of John, Jesus says about the raising of both groups. The Scripture says in John 5, verse 28 and 29, Do not marvel at this, Jesus said, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear His voice and come forth. Now listen, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. This is that same hour. The hour is coming when both groups are going to be raised. Those who have done right, resurrection of life. Those who have done wrong, resurrection of condemnation. And so the idea that there's going to be two raisings, that's clearly refuted in the Scriptures. And then let's think about another false doctrine or fantasy that is involved with the rapture. Hal Lindsey says this, The church will be in heaven for a period of seven years during the Great Tribulation. He goes on to say, Your presence during this last seven-year period in history is entirely up to you. Meaning, if you're going to be in heaven with the church during that tribulation, that's up to you, or you can stay down here and do what uh, other evil people are doing. Well, is it the case that the church is going to be taken up for seven years of tribulation and everybody else is going to stay down here? Friend, again, we don't find that being true. We find there being a great separation and all men are separated and God teaches that's not true. Notice Matthew chapter 25. I want you to look in the Word of God. Matthew chapter 25. Notice verses 31 through 36. Look at what the Bible says. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. All nations will be gathered to Him. Now watch this, they're all gathered. He will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on the right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked and clothed, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. And then he goes on to say in that same context to those on the left, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And so it's not as though there's going to be a time period where certain people are taken and certain are left. At the final judgment scene, there is a separation. You've got the sheep, you've got the goats. At that time, they're both separated. None of them are going to stay here. They are going to go and be with the Lord if they've lived faithfully to God. If not, they will be separated unto eternal punishment. Cast the wicked servant into outer darkness, he says. There'll be a great weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then I want you to think about another false doctrine related to the rapture, and that is... Many proponents of this will say that when the rapture occurs, events on earth are going to continue just as they always have. Meaning when Christ comes back, He receives His own, they're caught up with Him, that the earth's going to go on like it always has. Lindsay says this, in page 127 of the late great planet earth, he says, these believers, talking about those caught up in the rapture, these believers will be removed from the earth before the great tribulation, before that period of the most ghastly pestilence, bloodshed, and starvation the world has ever known. And so God's people are somehow going to escape that at the coming of the Lord, and then everybody else is going to get caught up in it. Well, friend, when the Lord comes, are things going to continue just as they've always have on earth? for those who are not God's followers? And will there be another period for people to make it right, as it were? Not according to the Word of God. I want you to notice in your Bible, 2 Peter chapter 3. Let's see what the Word of God says about that. Does the Bible teach that things are going to continue on after the coming of Christ? No. Look in 2 Peter chapter 3. And I want you to notice what the Bible says in verses 10 through 12. The Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the earth will melt, and the elements will melt with a fervent heat. And so the idea that when Christ comes back to receive His own, the idea that when Christ returns, the earth is going to stay and continue on, Friend, that's foreign to Peter and into the New Testament. Peter says, listen to this now, the earth and the works in it will all be burned up. They will be dissolved with a fervent heat. And so Peter says, in view of that, because we're going to be here as well when that happens, in view of that, what manner of persons ought you to be in, ho in holy conduct and godliness looking for and hastening? that great day. And so the day that God comes back, Christians also have to be ready. There's not going to be another chance for wicked people after that seven year period. The Bible clearly teaches when Christ comes and the last curtain falls, friend, that's the opportunity. That's the end of the opportunity people will have. But then let me mention another false doctrine related to the rapture that we can clearly see is not found in Scripture. Those who believe in the rapture say that many will be led to Christ after the rapture and during that seven years of tribulation. Uh, Lindsay states in his book, The Late Great Planet Earth, on page 132, he says, we need to understand that during the seven year tribulation there will be people who will become believers at that time. Well friend, is it really the case that after that secret coming, the rapture after the rapture and people are left on the earth for seven years of tribulation, is it really the case that after Christ comes there's going to be more chance and opportunity? That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that when the Lord returns that opportunity is ended. Notice in your Bible, 2 Thessalonians. I want you to see this from the Scripture. Look in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. And I want you to notice what the Word of God says about the coming of Christ and what it says in verses 6 through 10. God says, Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with trouble those who trouble you and to give you your troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven. Listen now. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. When He comes in that day, now watch this, to be glorified in His saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. And so here you have kind of a, a, a dual coming event again. He's going to be glorified among the saints. He's going to be glorified among those who believe in Him. What about everybody else? The Lord's coming in flaming fire to take vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel. That day, when He is glorified among His saints, when He returns to receive His own, the Bible says those who've not obeyed, there will not be another chance. On that day, He will reap out punishment to those who don't know God and to those who have not obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we encourage you to think about the many wild and fanciful ideas that revolve around the rapture and the premillennialism, the, the thousand-year reign of Christ. Does the Bible really teach these things? Friend, is it the case? Now you just imagine with me, okay? Is it the case that one day you're going to be riding down the road on a very busy street and cars are just going to start careening and going crazy and, and there are going to be vehicles without riders in them and there are going to be airplanes with pacemakers in the seat and people gone? Is that really what the Bible teaches? Friend, the Bible teaches there is one coming. John 5, 28 and 29. The Bible says that Jesus, that all on that day, all will come forth on the same day. Those who have done good, resurrection of life. Those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. The Bible teaches now is our opportunity 
to know God. We need to take advantage of now. Today is the accepted day. Now is the accepted time. 2 Corinthians 6 verses 1 and 2. The idea of being more chances and seven years of tribulation, again, very fanciful, very uh, Hollywood-like, if we can use that terminology. Friend, you just don't find that in the Scripture. And so as we think about these ideas, we express the importance of two things. Number one, checking everything we're told by the Word of God. There's a great need to study the Scripture, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, for ourselves. There is a great need to search those Scriptures daily, Acts 17, 11, and make sure that what we're told is true to the Word of God and, and not let false teachers or the doctrines of, of demons emanating from the halls of hell uh, cause us to be separated from the truth of God's Word. And then secondly, friend, the fact that these things are not true expresses the dire need to do what Jesus said in Mark 13. What I say to you, I say to all, watch, be ready. Mark 13, verses 35 through 40, Jesus taught us, be ready always. Friend, I'm not looking for another chance, another opportunity. People are not going to get that. Jesus said, be ready always. And friend, that's our encouragement today. If you have never obeyed the gospel, if you're not a Christian, friend, you need to become one today. Won't you do what the Bible says to become a child of God? Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? John 8, verse 24. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Would you be willing to, uh, once you believed in Jesus, would you be willing to turn from sin and repent? Jesus said, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess the name of Jesus before men? It was the Lord who said, "Unless you, if you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before the Father who is in heaven. Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And then, friend, to have every sin washed away, would you do what Jesus said in John 3, verse 5? Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. And so our encouragement today, if you're a child of God, is to, to look forward to and to hope in the coming of Christ. When that final curtain falls, when the veil comes down, and when all things come to an end, we know we have the hope of hearing those words, well, do, well done, good and faithful servant. May God encourage us, may we be encouraged every day to study the scriptures in view of many false doctrines. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at one 855 458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788 McMinnville, Tennessee 37111 This is the Gospel of Christ